On April 22nd and 23rd, United States President Joe Biden invited 40 world leaders to a virtual summit called the Leaders Summit. The purpose of this summit was to encourage large economies to cooperatively tackle the climate crisis and to set more ambitious targets to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. So what happened in the build-up to this event? Now, the Leaders' Summit was convened to not only pressure other polluting economies to ramp up climate ambition, but it was also intended to uh, be the opportunity where the United States will announce their new nationally determined contribution, or NDC, to the Paris Agreement. Um, so obviously, all eyes were on the United States an ambitious NDC in line with the United States' historical responsibility as well as their current emissions, of which they are the second largest emitter, was going to be key. Uh, it was one among many of the moves that might rebuild trust among skeptics uh, who have seen the United States water down climate treaties since the 1990s while also continuing to build a carbon intensive economy. So what did the US finally announce? On April 22nd, the US announced a new pledge to reduce greenhouse gas emissions 50 to 52% below 2005 levels by 2030. This is accompanied by the goal of reaching net zero emissions no later than 2050. So a little clarification is required here. There was some, uh, there were headlines and some talk circulating that this target uh, released by the Biden administration is double of the previous NDC set by President Barack Obama, which was a reduction of 26 to 28% by 2025. However, experts have clarified that this actually translates roughly to a 12% higher commitment because Barack Obama's NDC worked out to about 38% reduction in emissions by 2030 and Joe Biden's current NDC is 50% reduction by 2030. If you compare the current NDC to a baseline of 1990 instead of 2005, a 50 to 52 percent reduction below 2005 levels translates to about 41 to 43 percent reduction in emissions below 1990 levels. So how did this compare to the NDCs announced by other countries? Japan committed to reduce emissions by 46 percent from 2013 levels by 2030 compared to their earlier goal of 26 percent. Canada pledged to cut emissions by 40 to 45 percent from 2005 levels by 2030, compared to its previous goal of 30 percent. The European Union and the United Kingdom announced legally binding targets to reduce emissions by 55 and 78 percent, respectively, from 1990 levels. For this, the EU has a target of 2030 and the UK has a target of 2035. Individually, both of these commitments are higher than the previous commitments of both NDCs. Previously, the EU had committed to a 40% reduction and the UK had committed to a 68% reduction. Experts at Carbon Brief have assessed how each of these pledges stack up, the new pledges. With 1990 as a baseline, the UK's pledge is the most ambitious, followed by the EU, US, Japan and Canada. With 2005 as a baseline, the UK is still leading, followed by the US, the EU, Canada, and then Japan. Is the US's new NDC enough, however? According to the Climate Action Tracker, the US pledge of 50 to 52% emission reductions reduces the global emissions gap in 2030 by about 5 to 10% or 1.5 to 2.4 gigatons carbon dioxide equivalent per year lower emissions in 2030. However, this falls short of a 1.5 degrees Celsius compatible 2030 target by about 5 to 10 percent. In fact, the Climate Action Tracker had estimated that the US should ideally set a 57 to 63 percent domestic target in order to be compatible with a 1.5 degrees Celsius 2030 target, with additional support provided to developing countries to decarbonize their own economies. 
reduction goal set by the US is also far below the fair shares NDC estimate. Uh, if you look at the latest civil society report, the fair share calculation says that US should reduce its emissions by 195%. And, and of course, that everything cannot be done in the US. So a lot has to be done outside, but at least 70% of those emission cuts need to happen domestically and remaining 125 need to happen in the developing world and where financial and technology transfer has to happen from the US side. The fair shares NDC estimate is an estimate that has been endorsed by several prominent groups, including Action Aid, the US Climate Action Network, Friends of the Earth US, and 350.org. The groups have calculated that a goal of 70% domestic emission reductions below 2005 levels by 2030 is required for the US to commit to its fair share of emission reductions. This must be accompanied by a further 125% emission reductions abroad through support to developing countries, bearing in mind the dual goal of 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature rise and historical responsibility. What does the way forward look like? President Joe Biden has rejoined the Paris Agreement and has centered climate change in his rhetoric. In fact, earlier this month, he unveiled a $2 trillion infrastructure proposal that aims to incorporate climate-friendly policies in various aspects of U.S. infrastructure policy domestically. While the $2 trillion is still an insufficient investment given the scale of decarbonization required for the U.S., it's a step in the right direction. It's important for the climate community to remember that the U.S. is still deeply entrenched in a fossil fuel economy. As of November 2020, the U.S. had the highest amount of public money amongst G20 countries committed to fossil fuels in its COVID-19 recovery packages, far higher than to clean energy. So far, all the climate negotiations have focused only on the demand side and not on the supply side. Even the Paris Agreement doesn't refer to oil, gas and coal. And this is a major gap and that's exactly the reason now civil society has come together and we are talking about a new fossil fuel treaty, you know, in line of uh, what we have in, in nuclear, because we are now looking at fossil fuel as harmful as nuclear. And this is exactly the reason we would like US to take the issue head on and really talk about the emission cuts, particularly how they are going to move away from fossil fuel. So it's not enough to talk about clean technology. It's not enough to talk about just expanding renewables. They have to talk about how they are going to end expansion of fossil fuel and how they are going to phase out. And there is not enough coming. Interestingly and painfully, they have also come up with a new net zero producers uh, forum, which, which, which is absolutely unacceptable. So they really want to continue using fossil fuel which should not be accepted by the global community. President Joe Biden on the campaign trail had committed to end fossil fuel subsidies. However, in his $2 trillion infrastructure package, he proposes to cut only $35 billion in various tax credits and loopholes for fossil fuel companies, which many groups argue is grossly insufficient. It's important for the climate community to consider that the US is the largest oil and gas producer in the world and it is a heavy consumer as well. So the climate community must now push for actions that will ensure actual emission reductions for the US domestically, as well as adequate support to developing countries internationally, keeping in mind the US's historical responsibility, as well as our own goal, the, the global goal to keep temperature rise to below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Thank you.